Hi everyone, I wanted to come online. I know I haven't done one of these videos for quite some time, but I wanted to come online and just quickly run through a couple of questions that I've been receiving on my YouTube channel, which is mainly around how we balance um, our distance learning studies whilst we are working uh, full time. I use the term more than full time um, because sometimes it does feel like there's a lot of work coming in and it feels like you're, you're not having adequate time to conduct your studies. So I've come up with this video just to do some pointers as to what you can do and what steps you can take to be able to um, study effectively whilst juggling a full time role. So my first tip um, for you is to obviously plan your studies. So we are all aware of what our core working hours are. Um, so generally that could be the traditional nine to five, you might work a, a shift pattern, you might work um, a flexi time or flexible working hours. Um, a lot of the time at the moment, obviously we are at home. However, it is equally important, even though we are working from home, to be able to strike the right balance between our working lives and our home lives. And our studies obviously fit somewhere in between all of that. So if you commute, so if you are commuting to work, you can utilize that time quite wisely. So it may be a 15 minute commute, it might be a half an hour, it might even, when I was working in central London, it was actually an hour. So we can use that time to obviously read materials, we could listen to podcasts if they're available. We could also use that time to interact on social media. So I know that there's a lot of Facebook groups for students, there's um, LinkedIn groups, or with ICS, I utilized the student community a lot. So you'll be surprised at actually how much information you can take in by speaking to all of these different people and exploring all of these different resources during what can be quite a, a mundane time is, is the commute. The second tip that I have for you is to listen. So a lot of the time we'll be given a lot of materials that are reading materials. It doesn't have to stop there. A lot of um, places such as well YouTube are on there now. We also have a lot of available podcasts. So you've got obvious ones with the CIPD. You've also got podcast via expert HR which are a little bit more legalistic however they are very very useful for case studies and understanding case law you also have um, the industry experts I'm definitely not an industry expert um, but there's a lot of people on you that have YouTube channels um, but are also having their own podcasts so a, a fantastic one is by Phil Wilcox which is a motion at work so do check out his podcast as well there's also um, a lot of information in these that you can see from a practical perspective so when we are arguing our cases during our studies we are able to lend this expert knowledge into our studies and of course being able to deliver that in a practical term based upon what the theory tells us so it gives you a good balance so if you're struggling to understand the theory on its own by understanding it from a practical perspective it can really help untangle all of that confusion that can come from just pure fury, uh, pure theory based um, work so yes I will get that out try try saying that when when you've had a few <laughs> um, the second part is, or sorry the, the third tip that I have for you is about getting organized so arranging your study space uh, it, whether that's at home or whether you have an office that you can use, organising that space can really differentiate the work and home environment because ultimately you don't want to be sat there on the sofa, which is your relaxing space and using it as a study space. So making sure that you've got a separate corner for your books, your theory, your laptop, your podcasts, all of your technology, that can really help you to switch on and off when you are looking to study. You can also plan your study materials as well. So um, if you have a certain amount of reading that you have to do within a week or you have to explore different you know, resources or if you need to Google a lot, 
the chances are it often gets forgotten. Now, we need to use this information in our bibliographies, our referencing points. So one way of capturing that information and being able to track our studies, I used Trello, which is an app um, which I could then put in what I needed to do for that week. And then I can tick off the tasks one by one. I can archive them, but I can also export that information and put it into my bibliography and my references. So it made the end task around my assignments really, really easy and quite quick to, to navigate. So I wasn't spending hours trawling through what I'd already done. Um, so it can save you quite a bit of time doing that. So that's a really good tip. Um, we've already touched upon using our time wisely. So um, what I actually used to do was utilize my lunch breaks. So I wouldn't necessarily sit in the training room uh, where I was working at the time for an hour. I would do that occasionally if I was writing up my assignments. But um, one thing I did was put on a podcast and go walking around the local park where I used to work. And I was able to then in, or have a or take in a lot of information in a very short space of time and then I would just make notes of that if um, if I had a spare moment at the end of my break again it's a really useful way of taking in a lot of information um, quite quickly especially when we think it's quite overwhelming when we have to take in a lot of information but also how we then use that practically within our studies so I would definitely recommend doing something like that or taking your book to the park and reading if it's a nice day if not just setting aside some time in you could be in the training room at work you could be um, taking a break at lunch whilst working from home just literally running through that whilst you're eating a sandwich or, or taking your time to, you know, make time. With your studies, it's very important to keep in mind why you're doing this in the first place. So I'm a strong believer that you get out what you put in. So ultimately, if you want to achieve that qualification or if you want to achieve a level of membership, um, or that you've got aspirations for further study afterwards, it's really important to keep that in mind. And if you do really put the work in, then the dividends do pay out. So the reward is, is obviously there at the end. So do keep that in mind. And uh, all of those extra hours of study did add up for me and enabled me to achieve my level seven with ICS. So do make sure that you, you're keeping that end goal in mind. There's a reason why you're studying. So make sure that you're getting out what you put in. Um, so make sure whilst it is great to get those extra hours in that you are making time for breaks and that you're taking time for breaks but you're not procrastinating it's a really easy routine to get into if you say oh manana manana it will happen tomorrow we'll do it another day or oh don't worry i'll capture that next week if we all have that mentality then nothing's going to get done so again keep in mind the reason why you're doing this in the first place um keep hydrated eat a healthy clean diet that all comes into how we feel about ourselves and our motivations as well if we've eaten a really stodgy meal the chances are we're not necessarily going to want to study we're going to want to have a sleep on the sofa or watch netflix um, for one more episode so make sure that you capture why you're doing that in the first place but also um, keep your mind and body healthy it's really important because that's when we're performing at our best and last but not least, get connected. So share ideas, get online and link in with people via various communities. So if you're studying via a distance learning provider, the chances are they have their own student community that you can reach out to. So if you're stuck on something, you've also got your tutor support. So get in touch with your tutor, get to know them, um, find out exactly what they're looking for. Additionally, there's groups on LinkedIn, Twitter, you can easily access a wealth of HR professionals on there. There's hundreds of us on there. Um, just reach out and say, guys, what do you think about this? There's actually a handy um, uh, resource that you can use and it's on Twitter, which is called HR Hour that takes place every Thursday evening. 
So get in touch with the guys on there. They're always sharing so much information, whether that's case information, uh, benchmarking, what opinions there are. It also helps you to really argue your case. So there's difference of opinion, but it's all very constructive on there. So I would highly recommend people getting involved with that. Um, and don't forget that, you know, there's lots of student groups on Facebook. Um, so I'm a member of the CIPD's level five and seven groups that are on there. So we're all on there. We're all keeping in touch with each other. We're all helping each other out. So if you're stuck or if you feel that it's quite intimidating, I know I did at the very start. If it's all very intimidating for you, these guys can give you a lot of peace of mind. So thank you to everyone who submitted your questions. I really appreciate it. And thank you for um, your support on my social media channels. So do keep the questions coming. Do keep in touch. And if there's anything that I can answer, then feel free to reach out and ask the question. It's a pleasure and I'll speak to you soon. Take care.